So U.S. President Donald Trump is taking aim at four minority congresswomen with racist language. This on the same day that his administration says it has begun raids targeting thousands of undocumented immigrants. The president attacked the congresswomen in a series of tweets, writing, quote, so interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe. He added that they should leave to co go back to where they came from. But three of the four women he targeted were actually born in the United States. And the fourth, Ilhan Omar, came to the States as a child and became a U.S. citizen in 2000. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez responded, Mr. President, the country I come from and the country we all swear to is the United States. But given how you've destroyed our border with inhumane camps, all at a benefit to you and the core who profit off them, you are absolutely right about the corruption laid at your feet. And Elon Omar tweeted this, you're stoking white nationalism because you are angry that people like us are serving in Congress and fighting against your hate-filled agenda. She quotes Robert F. Kennedy saying, America's answer to the intolerant man is diversity, the very diversity which our heritage of religious freedom has inspired. Let's talk about all of this with Larry Sabato, director of the University of Virginia's Center for Politics. Larry, is there any other way to describe these tweets other than racist? Not in my mind, and I think that's been the consensus, except, of course, with the true believers, the Trump true believers. But how can you interpret it any other way? And he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, you know, people say, well, he doesn't really believe that. I don't care whether he believes it or not. He said it, and he's president of the United States. Uh, and it's racist. It's aimed at four women of color, the implication being that they weren't even American citizens. And in fact, three of them were born in America, and the fourth became an American citizen when she was quite young. So it's outrageous and Cyril, he knows it works. That's why he does it. Yeah, uh, you point out three of the four women that this was more than likely aimed at were born in the U.S. It could be more American based on where they were born. I mean, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, born in the Bronx. Uh, Ms. Presley, born in Cincinnati. Ms. Tlaib, born in Detroit. <laughs> you can't be more yes. American than that. That's absolutely true. But you see, it makes no difference to Trump. And I hate to say this, but it's worked with his followers, at least at Twitter. Uh, is any indication. They don't care where they were born. They agree with the sentiment. And the sentiment clearly is designed to energize them early on, just as he's energized them since day one for the election in 2020. I want to read to you um, part of Charles M. Blow's column in the New York Times following these tweets. He says, the central framing of this kind of thinking is that this is a white country founded and built by white men and destined to be maintained as a white country. He goes on, for anyone to be accepted as truly American, they must assimilate and acquiesce to that narrative. Do you agree with that? Uh, I do, and again, I, I would just suggest that the polls all the way along, including the most recent ones released in the last couple of days, show that it's working for Trump. Just as in 2016, he once again has large majorities among whites and particularly among white men, but also white women, but white men, a much larger lead. It works. That's why he does it. So, so this... So this is where we are now, Larry. I remember very well in the first year of, of his presidency, and there were several instances and several things that were either said or tweeted or done by the president that caused everybody, including ourselves, to ask whether it was racist and whether the president was racist. And I remember the day you and I spoke after he characterized, he used a derogatory term that I'm not going to repeat to characterize African countries. And I ask you, Larry, is the president racist? I remember your words. You said to me, I used to think he was racially insensitive, but now I think the president is racist. That was a year ago. And here we are again today. Yes, I agree with myself, uh, Cyril. I, I think I was right before, and I'm right now, and you're right now. And no one can really interpret this any differently, even if you add the political dimension to it. Uh, it still amounts to the same thing. It's encouraging racism, and it's revealing something about himself that I think we've always suspected even during the campaign, but as numb as we are to all this, it is so manifestly obvious that I don't know how anyone can mm. deny it. 
I want to run through some of the reactions, pull up some tweets. Let's start with Nancy Pelosi, but we have others. Um, the House Speaker had this to say or write. She says, when real Donald Trump tells four American Congresswomen to go back to their countries, he reaffirms his plan to make America great again has always been about making America white again. So she's making the same point that um, Charles Blow was making. Then we have Joaquin Castro. Uh, he kept it short. He kept it simple. He said, they're Americans. You're a bigot. All right, let's keep them coming. Uh, we have Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. She's one of the people who was targeted. She says this bold letters. This is what racism looks like. We are what democracy looks like, and we're not going anywhere. Uh, we have one more. Um, this one from Congresswoman Bass of California. Racist tweets, racists tweet racist things. What we should be focused on right now, though, especially today, is that racists also create and enforce racist policies. They're trying to deport people across Los Angeles. As I type this, stay focused, know your rights. Do you think this has any, the timing of this has anything to do, perhaps, with the raids that were going on today, or this is just, you know, the news just prompted the president to tweet this? Um, I think it's a combination. Look, he does this every week. It, it's not like he leaves the immigration issue alone or doesn't connect it to broader views of race that he and his followers have. So this is just of a piece. And as I say, we've all become numb to it, which is really dangerous. No one should ever be numb to this. But we've been at it now for years. He does the same thing over and over, and he believes it works and it has to this point. All right, Larry Sabato, I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about this again down the road. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you, sir. We have more now on those raids that the Trump administration says are targeting undocumented immigrants across the country. Immigration officials say they are going after about 2,000 immigrants ordered by the courts to be removed from the country in nearly one dozen major U.S. cities. But so far, CNN hasn't been able to confirm any arrests, and the New York Times reports that plans for the raids had to change. Instead of one large simultaneous sweep, they're doing smaller raids over the course of a week since news reports tipped off immigrant communities about what to expect. Yes, regardless, the acting commissioner for U.S. Customs and Border Protection says the focus of the immigration sweep is on violent criminals and aggravated felons, which should matter to all Americans. The individuals that ICE goes after, uh, and they do this every single day, are not individuals that are here undocumented. They're individuals that are here illegally. And in this case, their priority has always been, and it will be, to go after those that are criminal aliens, meaning those people that are here illegally and, and have committed additional crimes against American citizens. CNN's Paul Verkamen is in Los Angeles watching for any immigration raids there, but he says there wasn't much out of the ordinary this weekend. We were outside a detention center. We did not see any sort of targeted raids or anything unusual. The activists telling us that they decided they would not even put on any rallies or protests. They have been extremely vocal in their outright contempt and cynicism over Trump and the threatened raids. They basically have said that they accuse the U.S. president of trying to whip up his base by threatening these raids and trying to scare people, one even using the term poltergeist from the scary movie. What developed today was nothing. They had lawyers on the standby, and now these activists say they are now crossing their fingers and hoping they don't see any such sweeps or raids in the coming days. But they're taking a very, very calm view of all this, and they say, look, ICE raids in Los Angeles are common. There are some 500 and something arrests per month. So that would equal 16 or 18 arrests per day. So they say this is all just routine.